Ooh, y'all are gonna be mad at me for this one. Hey everybody, my name is John and welcome to ADITW, A Day in the Word, the internet's favorite Bible study. So, I don't know if you remember, but a couple of weeks ago, I asked you all to read two whole chapters. And I know that was difficult, I know it was really hard, but I'm gonna ask you to do it again. Would you please read 1 Kings chapter 10 and 11? <sighs> Okay, so I love the contrast of these two chapters. It's like in chapter 10, we read about Solomon, who's the wisest, greatest, kindest, most knowledgeable, most faithful man to ever live. And then in verse 11, we read about Solomon. What an idiot! Like, what? What we read about in chapter 11 is Solomon falling into the trap of lust. As the wisest man who ever lived, by the way, he still fell into the trap of lust. I hope this served as a humble reminder for you, I know it did for me, that absolutely none of us out there are too smart or too wise or too good to escape the temptation of sin. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how long you've been a Christian or how long you've been following Jesus, if we are not careful. If we are not constantly making sure that we're guarding our hearts, sin can creep in. And the smallest sin, even the smallest sin, can destroy the greatest person. Sin has this way of sort of creeping in through the cracks of our lives. And so we have to constantly be making sure that we are filling in those cracks with the goodness and truth of God. And even though in the first 10 chapters, basically, of this book, we have read about all of the good, all of the amazing, all of the faithful things that Solomon has done. Just a little bit of bad destroys so much of the good that Solomon was able to accomplish in his life. What we see in chapter 11 is that as a result of Solomon allowing this sin to take root in his life, he missed out on God's promise. Through the rest of the chapter, we read about how adversaries began to rise up against him. Eventually, he lost much of the kingdom for his family. By the end of his life, because he allowed sin to creep in, Solomon had lost most of what really mattered. And so as amazing and as wise as Solomon was, the end of his life is really a cautionary tale. And so I want to encourage all of us this week, myself included, to do an inventory of our lives. To really ask ourselves, where are we allowing even small sins to creep in? For me recently, it's actually been with the sin of anger. I've been traveling a lot over the past summer. I've been very busy. There's been a lot of stuff on my plate, both personally and professionally. And by the end of the summer, I found myself with a really short temper, whether it was with Sweet Bear or whether it was with my friends or my work. And even though it wasn't necessarily a problem yet, a while ago, Sweet Bear sat me down and she called out that small sin in my life. We began to root it out of the cracks and to instead replace it with the truths and the peace and the love of God. And that's really the note where I want to end on. The reason that we do this work, where, where we search and we find where sin is creeping in, is not so we can discover what a bad person we are. It's not so that we can feel really bad because we struggle with lust, or we struggle with anger, or we struggle with greed. But the reason that we do this work is so that we can root out evil in our lives and we replace it with the goodness of God. We root out evil in our lives so that we actually have more room to experience God's truth and love and joy and peace and grace. I really hope you all have enjoyed this study of the life of Solomon. This is actually where we're gonna end this First Kings study for now. We've sort of hit a really nice breaking point with the end of Solomon's life. I promise at one point we're gonna circle back. We'll finish up this book of First Kings, but for now, we're actually gonna move on to a brand new book in the coming weeks. I would love to hear from you all. What are some books that you would love to see us study here on this show in the future? I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below. As for now, that's the end of today's show. 
show. That's the end of this round of First Kings. Big shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon, specifically Tyler Woody, top tier supporter on there. Tyler, thank you for your generosity. If you wanna join the community of people like Tyler and help this show continue to be produced for as little as a dollar a month, you can visit the link in the description down below and become a patron today. I would greatly appreciate it. And each and every person who watches these videos week in and week out, they would appreciate it as well. All right, y'all, we'll see you Friday for another video and we'll see you next week for another episode of ADITW. I love you all. Keep being awesome.